The horse was first domesticated on the Eurasian plains around 3500 BC. Since the Ice Age, this was the home of the last surviving horse bands. The Bowtie culture from Central Asia are believed to be one of the early adopters of the horse. First, simply hunting them and later herding horses both for their milk and meat. At first, archaeologists believed that the Bowtie were the first horse riders, but recent evidence suggests that the Bowtie might have never actually done it. In fact, it is difficult to pinpoint when exactly humans first started riding horses, but it is now believed to have been at the turn of the first millennia BC. As horse domestication spread across the ancient world, it changed all societies it touched, in turn, substantially changing the ways of war. But how did the horse change society? How did it develop to be the fearsome weapon of war that decided many battles and conflicts throughout the ages? From the Bronze Age all the way into the Industrial Era. As horse breeding spread throughout ancient cultures, it became a symbol of power, at times a symbol of religion. It was prominent in Greek mythology, Poseidon can turn into a stallion and Ares has a special connection with horses. The Gauls had more than one deity connected to horses, perhaps the most famous one, the goddess Epona. The Scythians, famous horse riders from the north of the Black Sea during early antiquity, used horses as a form of currency, making the animals symbols of wealth and status. Their entire culture was centered around the horse, and they were just one of many. The domestication of the horse had a profound impact on all societies it touched. One could travel about three to four times as much and carry more weight when using horses to pull carts. It revolutionized travel, trade and communications. Knowledge and culture became easier to spread as trade networks flourished. The domestication and use of the horse were a catalyst for civilization. Around 3000 BC, the horse starts being adopted by Central Europeans and by 2300 to 2000 BC, it seems to have been fully introduced in the Mesopotamian cultures. The Sumerians naming the horse Ass of the Mountains. Which, admittedly, I did find funny, but it literally means Donkey of the Mountains. While horses might have already been ridden by this time, it would have been uncommon and mostly for hunting, sports, or in ceremonies. Throughout the Bronze Age, horses would be considerably smaller than modern horses, being around 1.3 meters tall. Riding a horse to battle would be unthinkable, laughable even. The rider couldn't have armor as the horses weren't large and strong enough to carry an armored person at speed, and due to the lack of saddles or stirrups, combat on a horseback would have been quite difficult. However, the horse wouldn't be out of the battlefield for long. By 2300 BC, the Sintashta culture from Central Asia developed the spooked wheel and the chariot. The chariot was a great innovation that revolutionized the battlefield. It quickly spread to Mesopotamia, China and later Western Europe. The chariots took the Mesopotamian elites by storm and quickly became a symbol of power, replacing the previous four-wheeled war carts that were pulled by rather slow onagers, precursors of the donkey. The nobles of Egypt, Assyria and the Hittite Empire used this new weapon to great effectiveness against one another in the endless wars of the Bronze Age. The chariot was a small, lightweight cabin drawn by two or more horses that allowed for speed. It wasn't used to charge at the enemy, instead, each chariot would have a driver and one or two archers or javelin throwers that would harass the flanks and rear of the enemy army. Alternatively, the chariots could transport soldiers to quickly outflank the enemy. Chariots with the purpose of charging the enemy would only appear during the 5th century BC. These were the Scythe chariots. These had blades under them and on the wheels to slice any nearby soldiers as the chariots whizzed by the enemy formations. It is at the turn of the 1st millennia BC that we start seeing the first real cavalry forces. These were the light cavalry of the Scythians and the Eurasian steppes. To counter the light-ranged cavalry, the peoples of Eurasia bred stronger, larger horses capable of wearing armor and carrying heavier weights. Progressively more armored cavalry emerged throughout the centuries, culminating on the extremely heavy and armored Parthian cataphracts of the 3rd century BC onwards. 
In the classical and Hellenistic periods, we see cavalry having a limited role. They were route chasers, scouts and skirmishers up to the 4th century BC. Cavalry forces were usually small in number since they were limited to the aristocracy and rich people of each city. Adding to this, saddles were quite primitive and some were limited to a cloth on the horse. As such, to be part of a cavalry unit, one had to be an excellent rider and the time to practice would only be available for the elites. In the Greek world, this changed with the rise of Macedon. From 359 BC onwards, Macedon employed cavalry extensively, turning the cavalry into a professional force and opening its ranks to the common soldier. Among these were the Companion Cavalry, a large elite cavalry force that had an active role on the battlefield, acting as the hammer to the Pike Phalanx Anvil. The use of Chuck cavalry was maintained by the successor kingdoms of Alexander the Great. Although we imagine the shock cavalry charge of Alexander to be a full gallop straight at the enemy, this is likely not the case. Without stirrups and proper saddles to stabilize the rider, it is unlikely that the riders could withstand the force of a full impact charge of the medieval period. It is also of note that it was hard to train horses to charge head-on, and the horseman within an infantry formation was relatively easy to overwhelm and bring down. It is more likely that charges happened at an angle on the flanks and back of the enemy force instead of the full gallop, perhaps at just a fast canter. The Romans saw limited use of cavalry up to the late 1st century BC. After the disastrous defeat at the hands of the Parthians in 53 BC at the Battle of Karai, the Romans realized the importance and impact of a large cavalry force. Following the humiliating defeat, the Romans gradually increased the presence of cavalry in the legions using a mix of light, medium and shock cavalry from all over the empire and mercenaries from beyond. It is of note that it is only by late antiquity after the 3rd century AD that innovations such as the saddle and stirrups are brought to the west. These innovations would allow for more powerful thrusts and much greater stability on horseback. Once these innovations had spread throughout Europe and the Middle East, the Age of Cavalry begun. It was then only a matter of time until the knight would be the king of the battlefield. Well, if you enjoyed this essay on the rise of cavalry, try one of the videos on your screen right now for more ancient history. And of course, stay wonderful and Wolf out.